I wanna tell you about the seventh season of 90 Day Fiancé. It has more villains and toxic scumbags than in previous seasons, but there's some real love in it too. Which couples in season 7 are doomed to break up, and which ones are doomed to stay together? Andrew Kastrovet and Elizabeth Potest are one of the strongest couples of season 7, the most solid in my opinion. They have been together for years, they have two children together, and they are doing well financially. Despite Andrew's attitude, behavior and temperament, Elizabeth often feuds with her siblings. But these conflicts have made this marriage stronger. It's not a fact that they can never break up or that their relationship is the healthiest, but I'm not talking about toxicity, I'm talking about the longevity of their relationship. Libby and Andrew are the most amazing of all. Jenny Sladen and Sumit Singh have been in a relationship for about a decade and are finally getting married in 2021. Jenny first came to India and seduced Sumit about 8 or 9 years ago, and they have been together ever since. But of course, Jenny and Sumit have been through many problems since then, from Sumit molesting her to Sumit's secret marriage of convenience. Their biggest problem was Sumit's toxic family who wanted to control him. Jenny and Sumit are likely to find a way to mend their relationship. Both have made tremendous sacrifices to make this marriage happen. Balal Hatsis and Shaida Sween got together very quickly after meeting in person. First they got married spiritually, then they tied the bonds of marriage legally, that is, on a visa. Both love big and small pranks. They are both fixated on purity in entirely different areas of their lives, and they both share their faith, Islam. Of course, there are problems too. Bilal has serious problems when it comes to communication issues. He tends to change the subject. He can talk condescendingly, lecturing Shaida. And of course, manipulation. It all goes beyond reality. From my observations, Bilal doesn't want to tell Shaida no to having a baby or starting her yoga business. He just changes the subject. It doesn't help. Why do I rate their chances of staying together relatively high? Because neither of them wants a divorce. Not right now, anyway. Maybe when Bilal breaks his promises, then Shaida will be deigned to desperate. In the meantime, he continues to stall with pledges. The marriage of Dovi Dufran and Yara Zeya is in a better position than that of Bilal and Shaida. They have been together longer, they already have a child together, and although they have their natural ups and downs, they love each other and enjoy each other's company. If it weren't for some recent disagreements, I'd put their chances higher on the list. Yara watches her homeland as ruthless Russia ravages the cities and towns of Ukraine. This horror was defined by mass graves, booby-trapped houses and streets littered with murdered Ukrainians. Yara misses her family, and she wants to help those who have become refugees. Yara loves her mother and would like to have her as a babysitter for Mila. And frankly, if there's going to be a move anywhere, it might cause a divorce. After all, Jovi and Yara love each other, but of course, love alone isn't enough, but they can make this marriage strong if they want to. And they want to. Kimberly Menzies and Usman Soja Boy Umar are far from the level of Jovi and Yara's marriage. They're not even married, they're barely engaged. They only got permission from Usman's mom to marry in season 7, under certain conditions. Also, they have problems, constant fighting and resentment. Anyone can go through difficulties, but I have yet to see these two not have them. But somehow, this relationship is so valuable to both of them that they still haven't broken up. Kimberly claims she is open to a second wife. Only time will tell if this is the case. Angela Dean is quite simply one of the worst people to ever appear on this show. She is polarizing and controversial, and she makes headlines. She is good for ratings, but she is certainly a terrible person. You could put her and Michael Elizani at the end of that list, but unfortunately it's not as it seems. Angela abuses Michael, abuses him verbally and emotionally. She is toxic and overbearing. She is also a huge hypocrite. I suspect that Michael has very different motives. Since nothing is loving about Angela, I wonder if he's cheating on her. I'll tell you straight up that even if he is a cheater, no one deserves monstrous treatment that Angela shows toward Michael. I wish they would break up, but there's no reason to think so. Big Ed Brown and Liz Woods don't make sense as a couple unless you look at their dating histories. Liz seems to tend to date toxic men, and I know Ed likes to seek out desperate 20-something single mothers. Why did I call these two of the most likely to break up? Because they have broken up at least nine times, most of them through text messages. I've heard Ed's abusive voice messages and seen how he treats around the screen, yet the same manipulative tactics help him get Liz back. 
over and over again. It's sad. The likelihood of them breaking up again is pretty high. That's great, ideally before the wedding, but things can get better afterward. Unfortunately, the likelihood of them getting back together after is alarmingly high. That's it for now, folks. More and more love into your household.